Yesterday, Moog Music announced that the production cycle for the limited reissue of the Mini Moog Model D is coming to an end. And while this remains an unfortunate piece of news for many who are sad to see the Model D line at the end of its life, for now, a new, more affordable option has recently surfaced. Enter the Behringer Model D, a Eurorack sized synth inspired by Moog's legendary analog monosynth. Here's a little history of the iconic analog inspiration for countless number of tunes and twiddlers. The Mini Moog Model D was originally introduced in 1970 and was in production until 1981. This original run was groundbreaking to say the least. The Model D was designed in response to the use of synthesizers in rock and pop music. Large modular synthesizers were expensive, cumbersome, and delicate, not ideal for live performance. The Mini Moog remains popular today as not just a top of the line synth for musicians and enthusiasts, but also as an iconic piece of history that ushered in an entirely new era in music. All that said, this may be the swan song to the Mini Moog Model D line. Moog Music announced the end of the Voyager on September 30th, 2015, and subsequently announced the end of the Voyager XL on March 27th, 2017. Now with the reissue Model D saying farewell, does the Behringer Model D have the right size foot to fill some incredibly large shoes? Here's some questions I asked myself as a former Voyager owner. The Behringer Model D is outfitted with three voltage-controlled oscillators, a 24 dB voltage-controlled filter that is self-resonating and switchable between low-pass and high-pass, pink and white noise, an overdrive circuit, new CV connectivity, MIDI over USB, external audio input for processing external sounds, I mean the list goes on. You'll pinch yourself when you see the price, but at $300 the Behringer Model D sounds too good to be true, and before you pre-order it, you have to ask yourself, is it? Can a synth costing $300 really replace a $3,500 piece of what some might consider music history? Is the Behringer Model D a steal, or is the Mini Moog Model D an overpriced dinosaur? In my opinion, nothing has touched the feeling you get from playing a genuine Mini Moog, whether it be the Model D, Voyager, or the XL. Just the presence gives you illusion of well-to-do. It's like showing up at a person's house, and they've got a Porsche 911 in the garage. It's a work of art, a fine-tuned machine, and a statement piece all in one package. That being said, how can Behringer offer all this for such a low price? I myself question, what is really here? Offering all the Mini Moog Model D was, while adding MIDI and some additional CV controls makes you think what must have been taken away. Everything is a compromise, is it not? Now I know what many people are thinking, Behringer and analog synthesis just don't mix. But with the release of the DeepMind 12, an affordable but incredibly feature-packed synth, has Behringer proven itself worthy to create what is essentially the clone of one of the most famous synthesizers in history? I say yes and no. The DeepMind 12 is an original creation and a ballsy one at that. Behringer entered the synth market guns blazing and pulled no punches, though I've never actually seen a DeepMind in my studio and live performance travels. Regardless of what that means to you, in fact, it speaks volumes to me. As a studio and touring keyboardist, reliability and name recognition play a big role in your setup. Honestly, what's in a name? Moog? Moog? However you pronounce it, Moog is more than just a brand. Bob Moog is the father of analog synthesis as we know it. Moog cannot be replicated and Moog is rarely imitated. The price tag of a genuine Moog isn't cheap but what other company is run by its employees and offer hand-built synthesizers out of a factory in the United States? When you buy a Moog, you're in one way supporting an idea, a philosophy. It's less about the knobs and buttons and more about the people behind the pieces. Some say imitation is the greatest form of flattery, but in this case, I don't fully agree. The Behringer Model D is a clone and not the real deal, a replica and not a replacement. Should analog synthesis be available to the masses? Of course, but at what cost? Is it kosher to see the front panel of one of the most iconic analog synths branded with the namesake of one of the most well-known copycats in the music manufacturing industry, whether those accusations are true or not? I don't have these answers. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Let me know in the comment section what you think of the new Behringer Model D. Will you be picking one up? Or if you could, would you like to see Mo come out with their own officially branded unit? I look forward to seeing the discussion. Remember, follow me on Instagram and subscribe to me here so you don't miss an episode. I appreciate you listening. These have been my thoughts on.